Hi everyone, my name is Pat McNulty. Welcome back to Evangelization Trading with the Diocese of Columbus. Before we dive in, let's start with a quick prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, we thank you for the gift of our faith. Thank you for coming to rescue us when we had been captured. Jesus, we pray that you would set us free and help us to show others the way to being free themselves. We ask this all in your name. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Awesome. Cool. If you're joining me now, that means you watched one video with me and then three videos with Father John Ricardo. If you haven't watched those Father Ricardo ones, pause it right now, head back, watch those, because um, those are really the foundation of what we're going to be talking about moving forward. But if you have watched those, then welcome back. Gosh, Father Ricardo is awesome. He gets me so fired up. And Jesus is awesome. Jesus is really the one getting me fired up, right? He's so good. Um, yeah, just the fact that God has gone to such great lengths to save us, to bring us back into his family. And he truly does care about us and desires that relationship with us. It's so amazing. Um, yeah, and so it's just incredible. So now we are kind of pivoting. Now that we know and really understand the root of what our faith is, we're going to be pivoting into what exactly is evangelization. So I want you to take a moment and think about your own life. If you're watching these videos, you care enough about your faith to want others to know about it, which means you really know that this faith is great, it's important, um, it probably motivates most of the decisions of your life. Um, it's a really big thing, right? And somehow that faith has been instilled within you, right? So just take a moment to think about how did you get here now? You know, what were the key, you know, formative moments of your life? Um, within your faith? What are the times that the faith really took a deeper, deeper place within your heart? As you think about this, um, I'm sure that along the way there have been people involved in those steps, right? Maybe you um, didn't grow up with the faith, but someone introduced you to it later in life. Maybe you did grow up with the faith and your parents are really the ones who cultivated that within you. Um, maybe a, a good priest spoke really good words into your life at a certain point. Um, whatever it may be, I'm sure that there was someone or maybe multiple people involved in helping you grow in your faith. It probably just didn't come out of nowhere. Um, so as you think about that, understand that the faith has always been passed down from person to person. Since the beginning of our faith with Jesus himself, our faith has been handed down mouth to mouth, person to person, from in personal relationships all the way through, all the way down, which is really cool to think about. And really now we as the church have the mission of sharing that with our generation, with sharing this faith with people of our time and helping them to know this great news that they too have been saved. Um, yeah, it's awesome. But before we dive too deep into this, I want to start with the word evangelization. It's kind of an odd word, and really I want to focus in on how the church uses, chose to use this word. So an evangelist, um, the original word is evangelion, and it's, a, it's actually a position in the Roman army. That's how we got the word. So if you ever watched like Lord of the Rings and you'll notice like they're coming back to the city and everyone is celebrating, well, this is rooted in a Roman tradition that when the victorious army would return to the city, there'd be a huge festival, a huge parade for all the returning soldiers, huge feasts for everyone in the city um, to celebrate the recent victory. But back in the day, they didn't have phones or laptops, no email, no text, no calls, nothing like that. So somehow the city had to get wind of the fact that they had won the battle and then know when they can expect the army to be back so they can prepare this huge celebration. And that fell to the Evangelion. That was this person's job. That the moment the victory was won, they would ride full speed back to the city to tell the good news to the entire city that, hey, we won the battle. This is awesome. Time to celebrate. Um, and that's how the church got this word, which is kind of crazy that um, we stole this word from the Roman army. And it's really bold of us to do, to say, hey, we know that y'all celebrate military battles. We celebrate Christ and we celebrate that he has won the ultimate battle for us. So this is, yeah, truly an incredible word um, for us to use as evangelists. And yeah, really taking that to heart to be the, the herald of good news um, is really what you are searching to do. So yeah, we really get to be the heralds of good news within the world today, which is awesome. And this has really been God's plan all along, right? Even from the very start. So at the very start of the world, Adam and Eve, they sin, they kick God out of the world. And then God slowly reintroduced himself, right? He started with just a little family with Noah and then grew that to a nation. Abraham and his family were a nation, much larger. Um, eventually that would become the kingdom of David, right? So an even larger group. And then when Jesus come, he usher, comes, he ushers in this worldwide blessing and this worldwide time of entering back into the faith. 
And the church is the means through which people are able to enter into that relationship with God. So we're really blessed to be able to share this good news and welcome people um, into the faith. But if you think about evangelization, um, you might think, um, yeah, kind of of what society talks about with evangelization, which isn't the best, uh, best news for sure. So think about maybe some of the things that you hear about evangelization from the world around you. You think, um, you can't force your faith on other people, keep your faith to yourself, you should separate your faith from your other parts of your life. Um, you hear all these different things about how evangelization is wrong and it's really bad. Um, but truthfully, evangeliz- evangelization is a great thing. Now, I moved to Columbus about two years ago, and when I moved to Columbus, someone took me to Thurman's, which if you've ever been to Thurman's in Columbus, you'll know how awesome it is. Um, and so I went to Thurman's, I was fired up, and the moment that my fiance at the time, she came to visit me, I took her straight to Thurman's because I wanted to share with her how awesome that place was. Um, she loved it too. We go all the time still. Um, it's probably not good for my health, but it's great. Um, but that's really what this vision of evangelization is, that we have had something awesome happen to us and we get to share it with others. Now, if I took someone to Thurman's and they didn't like it, well, too bad. Um, you know, I guess that didn't really work. You know, I'm not going to force them to order something or force them to eat there, um, but I want to sh- them to share in something that gives me joy. I want them to share um, in a good thing that I know of. In the same way with my faith, but even to a greater degree, I want to share how good that is. I want others to know how good it is um, and be able to help them, yeah, really learn how much joy there is within our faith. So when you think about evangelization, don't think about forcing other people to be faithful. The word I want you to think about is invitation. Evangelization and invitation could be synonyms in some ways. That we're not forcing faith on anyone, but we're inviting them to learn more. We're inviting them to see the faith in a new life, and we're inviting them to meet the person of Jesus. So always think about evangelization as invitation. What the person does with that invitation, that's up to them. But we just have the power to invite. Um, And this is really important. This is actually part of who we are as Catholics within our baptism and furthered by our confirmation. uh, We are all called to evangelize. And that's seen by Jesus' last words. Jesus, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, he gives the Great Commission, right? He says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. That's what he charges the church to do. Right as he's about to leave the earth, he says, this is your job. This is your role to go out and make disciples, make believers who will follow him. Um, So yeah, it's really important. And even today, um, our church today is really big on evangelization. This is a huge blessing of Pope Francis's papacy that he has brought just an incredible culture of evangelization. Um, He wrote an encyclical encyclical called Evangelii Gaudium, which is the joy of the gospel. I just wanted to highlight a couple awesome quotes from that. One of the things he says is that every Christian is challenged here and now to be actively engaged in evangelization. Indeed, anyone who has truly experienced God's saving love does not need much time or lengthy training to go out and proclaim that love. I love that quote. We're all called to share the love that God has for us. And I love that you don't need lengthy training, right? Um, We're so excited to be able to provide this training, but I'm sure at the end you'll find, wow, that wasn't super long, that wasn't super complicated. Um, And there's a reason for that, because sharing the love of Christ, it doesn't have to be complicated. We can go out and we can just do it very simply and very easily, which is what we'll look at with the rest of these classes. Another thing Pope Francis says is, when the church summons Christians to take up the task of evangelization, she is simply pointing to the source of authentic personal fulfillment. Right, so we are actually fulfilled. The more that we share our faith, the more that we are fulfilled within our hearts and within our lives. St. James writes about this in one of his letters. Right? He says, I'm writing this letter so that my joy may be complete. Right, so if you kind of find something lacking, that's something missing, and you're like, wow, I feel like I need to take another step forward um, in order to find kind of what's lacking, this might be what it is. Evangelization, sharing the faith, is what completes the joy that is within us. So evangelization... Um, It's just truly an incredible thing. It's awesome. Um, We love to share our faith. And Jesus tells us, you know, whoever clings to their life um, will lose it. But those who give their life away, they will find it. And this is a chance to give our lives away for someone else, to help them to know Jesus, to enter a relationship with him. And we're not here to force people to do that, but we're here to invite them. And we're here to be models for them for how awesome a life with Christ truly is. So you are called to mission. You are called on mission for our church and to work alongside Jesus in sharing his love throughout the world. 
So I want you to take time um, after watching this video to pray about that. Pray about the fact that Christ is calling you to mission. You know, ask Christ, where are you calling me, Lord? Where are you sending me? What is it that you ask of me? Ask him these questions in prayer. They're really important because all of us have a mission that he has set us here on this earth for. And it's in discovering that mission that we really will find that authentic personal fulfillment. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited to be continuing this videos with you. God bless.